I'm sorry for how quick I'm jumping into this, but I don't have much time. When I woke up this morning, or it could be night, there's no sense of time here. For all I know, I've been here for days. Like I was saying, I woke up in this place. I have no idea where I am. I just know that this might be my one chance at, well, I, I don't even know. And the whispering, it just won't stop. I guess this is a warning. Although, I don't know how you would avoid this happening to you. All I can tell you is what's happening to me. I woke up lying face down on a cold metal table. As I craned my head to the side, I found myself in a strange white room. The first thing I noticed about the room was how eerily clean it was. The walls and floors were a matching shade of white that flowed together so perfectly that it was hard to tell where the floor stopped and where the walls began. In fact, the only reason I could tell the room wasn't round was that I could see a table up against the far wall with a wide array of surgical tools. There were no windows as far as I could tell, and I could hear a subtle electrical hum and the occasional high-pitched beep of what I assumed was some kind of monitoring system. Is this a hospital? I thought to myself, did I get into some kind of accident? Not even a minute after I had woken up, I could hear footsteps echoing just outside the room behind me where I assumed the door was. Sure enough, I heard it open and I could hear three distinct voices enter the room. Now you know that feeling you get when you wake up in the middle of the night and feel like something is watching you. Just waiting for you to wake up. You know, when you get the urge to pretend you're asleep and you don't dare move. This was my reality. I didn't know why I woke up in that room, but I knew that this was no hospital and these men were not doctors. I don't know how, but I just knew something wasn't right. So I pretended to be out cold. I just wanted it all to be a dream. I wanted this all to be a really bad dream. As I lay there pretending to be unconscious, I could hear them mumbling to each other. This unnerved me. Do they know I'm awake? I tried to steady my breathing as one of the men walked closer. I felt a cold, wet sensation on the back of my neck and recognized it as one of those little alcohol pads. Before I could put two and two together, the needle pierced my skin and the thick, coarse liquid made its way into my bloodstream. I couldn't hold it together anymore. My whole body was seizing up. It felt like they had injected me with cyanide. Every muscle in my body was convulsing. I felt my back bend back way further than it should have been capable of. I remember trying to scream, but being in too much pain to do anything but squirm. The pain kept increasing until finally my body grew very stiff and I found myself unable to move. And though I'd lost my ability to move, the pain started to slowly subside. All right, doctor, we've seen enough. Proceed to phase two, a woman's voice said over an intercom system. Still unable to move, I felt that same cold, wet sensation again. We're cleared to administer the sedative, doc, said one of the men in the room. 
I felt another needle pierce the back of my neck. What the fuck is happening to me? I remember thinking as the world slowly faded away. I awoke some time later in complete darkness, gasping for air. My body was extremely sore all over from the stress and trauma it had just went through. My back still felt like it was being bent backwards, and my head was throbbing in response to the pain. In all honesty, I was surprised to still be alive. I knew I was going to die if I stayed there. Just then, the lights flipped on in a blinding flash. I could hear footsteps and voices outside the door. When I tried to move, I realized I was strapped down at the table this time, and my attempts of breaking free only made the throbbing in my head worse. So I lay there, ready to accept my fate. I say that now like I had courage. When the door opened, I once again pretended to be asleep. I hadn't seen the men before, as I was facing the other direction, and I didn't want to this time. It's funny how we can give ourselves a false sense of security by pretending to be unaware of danger, even in the most dangerous of circumstances. This time though, it gave me more than security. Two men had entered the room this time. As scared as I was, curiosity got the better of me. I snuck a quick peek. They were both wearing white lab coats. One looked to be in his mid-twenties and was writing something down on a clipboard. And the other, a much older man, was preparing a syringe. And the size of the needle made me sick. Was that what they stuck me with earlier? I quickly shut my eyes and went back to the safety of pretending to be unaware as they both began to approach the table. I'm still not sure about all of this. This wasn't exactly in my job description. I didn't go to med school for this, said the man with the clipboard. None of us did. Better them than us. Here, why don't you inject this one? He seems to be well sedated, unlike the others. And don't worry, eventually it gets easier. The money makes it worth it, said the man with the syringe. Now I'll undo the restraints so we can turn him over. Remember, we need to get this done quickly and prepare the specimen before the observation team arrives. The men were standing on either side of the table. As soon as the restraints came off, I grabbed for the first thing I could which happened to be the younger man's shirt collar. I yanked him down in an effort to pull myself up, sending him falling into the table. The older man let out a cry as the needle plunged into his gut. He pulled it out as quickly as possible and immediately ran from the room screaming for help. He tried to run at least. He ended up knocking over a table on his way out, littering the floor with surgical equipment and empty syringes. My body was on fire. My head felt like it might explode from the sudden shift in movement. Just then, the younger man tackled me to the ground. As I hit the floor, my leg was impaled by some sort of scissor-looking tool. I screamed in pain. He was attempting to put me in a sleeper hold and I was slowly losing the will to fight. At the last second, my hand found an empty syringe and I stabbed at his head as hard as I possibly could. It wasn't hard enough to kill him as he screamed like I never heard a man scream before in my life. The syringe had stabbed him through his eye and out through the side of his face. He was on the ground writhing in pain. I didn't know what to do. I left him there and ran out of the room. Down the hallway, I could see the older man convulsing and bending in ways that shouldn't have been humanly possible. Then, the creepiest thing happened. He turned and looked at me dead in the eyes. His face of pain slowly turned in to a grin that stretched from ear to ear. 
I turned and ran, seeing an elevator at the end of the hall. When I turned to look behind me, I saw the man crawling along the walls chasing after me. Tears instantly filled my eyes. I had never been so scared in my life. I reached the elevator and quickly hit a few buttons at random and then smashed the closed door button. Just as I thought my life was over, the younger man let out another shriek of pain. My grinning fiend immediately turned around and ran back the other way towards the old room. As the elevator doors closed, when the elevator opened, I quickly made my way down another hall, checking every door to see if one was unlocked. That's how I ended up here, in this room. I found this computer, and I'm hoping to get this out to someone. Anyone. I'm hearing whispers now. It's like a nightmare I can't wake up from. I don't know who these people are or what they were testing on me, but it's not right. It's not right. The worst part is, I don't know why I'm here or why they wanted me. Maybe I was a good candidate for whatever the fuck they were messing with. Maybe I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'll never know the truth. So I guess this is a warning. Or a message. Whatever you want to call it. The whispers are getting louder now. <laughs>